Hello and welcome to York County. I'm Lynn Turner Fitzgerald. Stoney Field joins me today. Stoney, of course, is the general manager at Metro Park. Just almost got a year under your belt or a little bit more? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, and, and Lynn, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank I, you. I know I was, I was pretty fresh under the, uh, the gills when, when we met last time. So yeah, and um, first of August, or our fair actually will be my full year right. here, back here. So when you started, you jumped right into last year's fair. Right, I uh, slid right in. <laughs> Absolutely! Wow. Yeah, the Monday was my very first day, and fair started on Friday. So, okay. um, yeah, I was I was able to at least learn a couple of the building names by the time fair started. <laughs> so, no, was was really a, a great experience. Good. So here we are, Montana Fair 2024. Um, always some pretty good entertainment. Is that? Are you in charge of making those bookings, or do you have a committee that does so it? So we, we do it internally. Um, mm -hmm. there, there, we do have a marketing department that actually does those bookings. Fair, fair bookings for uh, entertainment are a little more difficult than they are um, the rest of the year. Uh, it, it, the difficult part of it is, is the fair is a regulated time frame. So it's really down to one of these three days, can you make it? Right. Um, so there's a, there's a premium that we, we have to pay for for some of that exclusivity, um, and it's very limiting. So a lot of the very large um, concert tours have already booked their, their year yeah. for 2025, and so unless it is something that would be in their routing, mm -hmm. um, it's not something that they're willing to say, you know, take a, a take a flight and come back to Billings to hit. So so there's some it's all limitations. About the travel, isn't there it? really is. There's a yeah. lot of limitations in how how we are able to schedule some of those things. So um, and and the groups are really it, it depends on on their genre and if that's something that that they want to do as well. So there's a lot of negotiations. Yeah. People don't realize that um, fair ends in nine days afterwards, but we start the very next fair. We're actually right, right now right. In, in the works to try and have our 2025 um, artists straightened out as well. Well, I think it would be pretty difficult for you to name a target audience for the fair. It's every age, every desire, every background. And I think that's that's probably the neatest part of it is to to really tap into the creativity of our team to find out okay how how can we find those genres how can we get them uh, all involved how can we get the right fair food how can we get the right entertainment and mm -hmm. and the right atmosphere to to really accommodate everyone that we can one of the the things that this year we're, we're really excited about is that we've engaged with the Native American Development Corporation and um, our Tuesday of the fair will be um, an, an Indigenous Heritage Day. Oh, nice. So we'll have them down. Um, we're really trying to get as, as much Native presence as we can mm -hmm. involved and, and bring our fair to a, to a wider audience and, and really touch base with, with the folks who um, are a part of our community and, and make sure that we get everyone involved. Well, will there be demonstrations, dancing, things so, like that? So there'll be a, a handful of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, we will have some teepees. One of, one of the things that's going to be unique about this year's fair is what we're considering the lunch and learn. So Monday through Thursday at noon, we will have different speakers. So minim, like a mini symposium type of yeah. thing, a 30 to 45 minute um, educational situation. I don't have those times exactly down. Um, all of that will be available on our website, but there's um, intrigue from uh, weather forecasting to the Native American folks and, and a teepee building. So they're going to actually give a lesson on oh. how to how to uh, facilitate putting up a teepee. Um, there's uh, some historical stuff about fairs and carnivals. And so so we're going to have a That's nice great. opportunity for those folks that want to come down around lunchtime and, and be able to learn some of the things. We're going to figure out how that looks and, and what type of present, presentation we're going to do for the next years coming up. Because uh, next year will be our 110 years celebration of, no, of Montana kidding. Fair. No mm -hmm. oh, Okay, I feel old now. <laughs> All right, so you open on the 9th of August and the fair runs through the 17th. First night is Boys Like Girls. Okay, the and that's that's one of our concert evenings. Yeah. Um, and that the Friday is really a kickoff to sort of, um, it, it's not a soft opening as, as well, the terminology goes. Well, they used to call it goes. sneak a peek, didn't it, they? It did, so there's, um, there's a handful of things that uh, it gives us a chance. I mean, I hate to say it, but we try and get the kinks worked out on sure. those nights too yep. because there's a lot going on. Uh, the one thing about a fair that's different than the rest of our year is it 
it has differing events every single day right. for the entire day. Um, a concert takes a couple of days to, to get everything planned and put in place. It's over in one evening and we clean up. Um, for fair, we have a concert, we still have the carnival, we still have all of these different events that go on. So it's, it's literally like putting on uh, 10 days worth of events in one day, but we do that for nine straight days. So it's, it's truly like a quarter of the year all happens in a little over wow. a week. So it must be a pretty coordinated event. Absolutely. I mean. And we, we rely on not only my team, but those involved that, uh, that are coming in to make sure that, that their logistics are correct. We all want to, to put on a really good opportunity for folks to come and enjoy themselves and be okay. entertained and, and, and get into the, to the fair mood to have the right, right kind of food and, and the rides and all of the things that go along with that. Well, we should talk about security too. Okay. So tell me what the security is going to look like this year. So last year um, there was a, a presence from not only the Yellowstone County um, Sheriff's Department, but we had Highway Patrol there, some mm -hmm. parole, and uh, um, I'm not really sure their entire, uh, it's, it's the parole group, so yeah. um, we had a nice presence there. We'll have those same folks are going to be involved again this year. Uh, we want everyone to feel safe when they mm -hmm. come to our facility, no matter what. So um, everyone's on board to make sure that that experience is good for everyone. And if there's any bad actors, that, that they deal with those uh, immediately. And swiftly. I, I thought it was a nice touch myself last year. I thought, uh, this, this makes sense in this day and age. What are you going to do? Um, we've got Barrel O' Fun on the grounds during the fair. It looks like a couple. A man and a wife are they so so one of the aspects of fair are um, they're on the grounds so they're actually moving around not all the time are are our acts capable of just being on a single stage and right. we're gonna have two stages this year again um, a main stage and then a secondary stage that's more down in the Heritage Park area so these are called strolling acts and what oh. they do um, is engage themselves throughout the entire grounds uh, engaging the kids and folks so um, they have a, a handful of tricks up their sleeve I think that they do um, some different uh, tricks and hypnosis and and actual like balloon animals and there's there's just a lot of that type of uh, engagement so that I mean um, in the past years we've had stilt action yep. and different folks that uh, I mean even um, before my time was some folks that had uh, uh, parrots and birds and so wow. so each year we look to, to try and diversify as much as we can and bring stuff that folks haven't seen and 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 these these type of acts um, they're they're all over the place and they they really yeah. have have a, a following and so what we do is give everybody an opportunity to to come and, and show their wares as well I see you've got some stunt dogs coming this year uh, the June bugs two guys singers mm -hmm. it looks mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um, the wagon of whimsy and so these are these are all free with Absol admission, with Absolutely. admission, right? Absolutely. Okay. We only have our night acts that um, that are uh, at cost. Right. So all of these acts, so the, the bands will be playing on those stages. They'll have different times. So once you get down there and we get all of those things coordinated, when you're on grounds, you'll know the scheduling of each of the bands and when they'll go on the stages, which stages they're going to be at. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, uh, it, the ability to to create some different entertainment across mm -hmm. the board. So um, some of the genres of, of the bands are a little bit different, but all of these are, are um, you know, very, very well versed in, in the entertainment industry. Yeah. And so they're very used to not necessarily sitting and doing a two hour show, but engaging in different crowds as, right. the, as the folks move in front of them. And all pretty family friendly shows. Absolutely, we are completely so family friendly. I was curious though, these, these individual entertainers that come and, and wander, are they connected with the carnival or are they independent no, contractors? They are individually contracted by us. Okay. So, um, do you audition them? I mean, so we have a, a group that helps us with that. Um, and what they're going to do are going to be the folks that actually coordinate each and every day and make sure that they have what they need, that everyone's where they're supposed to be. So they give us um, a a list per se of the folks that are going to be available because again it, it comes down to to routing who's yeah. going to be available if if we're late to the to the party we may not get um, certain groups they may right. have already booked it to a state Monta or excuse me Minnesota State Fair or somewhere else and and so we have to be able to 
accommodate those and that's why we always have an early start into the next year and we're, we're trying to get the very best opportunities that we possibly can so um, Again, in today's world, people don't audition live. They show oh. us your tapes and, and you go on and, and get experiences. A lot of times we research through uh, different facilities and different fairs and said, um, you've had this group, what do you think? Where, sure. w what are your experiences with them? How were they received by your, uh, by your spectators? And so um, that networking that we do year round at different fair conferences and things like that is, is truly helpful. Totally valuable. Um, the draft horses appear on the 10th. That's Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. That's always very popular, isn't it? It is. It is super popular, and actually, we're it, it, there's an increase in participation from from the competitors as well. So this year's even more than we have in the past, and and they have a, a tremendous group. Um, we're excited about that. Our we really wish that we could get a, our facilities in the in a little more accommodating situation this year. Um, one of the things that we've been doing, and if you've been driving by our grounds, you've been noticing a lot, lot of construction equipment mm -hmm. that's been out there. So the um, American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, mm -hmm. um, was funding that had started a few years back, and, and it was to help facilitate um, a, a lot of different projects across the nation. Um, it's not uh, sexy and fun because it's all underground stuff, so you don't get to see great buildings coming up and things like that. But we've done close to thirty million dollars worth of work um, through our through the Yellowstone County's ARPA funding, and that is all of our underground piping for water, for sewer, electricity. Um, uh, there's there's drainage differences. We have new pavement in the back of our grounds, so a lot of that stuff that people don't necessarily consider when they when they think of, of us and, and what we're doing, um, it's all for the long haul. So, wow. so long term, we're, we're taking out a lot of, uh, uh, there was, I believe there was sewer lines that were probably 50 years old. So mm. that's, that's some of the stuff that we're doing to engage those dollars in the most effective way to take us into the future. And so um, with that, unfortunately, uh, there, there's a lot of work that has to be done. And so we're, we're getting some, some areas for the draft horses, but as we look to the future, we're going to have a um, facility that will be able to accommodate them at, at the high, <laughs> excuse me, at the highest quality. So Wonderful. this year, this year they're working with us, and we're working with them to to create the best event we can. Now they're noon to five. They come. There are a couple of appearances for the draft horses, aren't there? Yeah, so a it's, couple it's, of days. A, it's a competition, and so the disciplines will change. Um, based on, on the number of competitors, but they can be anywhere from a single horse pulling to um, a team pulling to competitive pulling to actually show. So they will, they'll be moving in a, in a course that's been dictated to them. Um, some of them are in costume. They actually have some chariots that are down there and really? folks who look like gladiators. So it's really, it's really unique if you haven't been to it. It's, it's something that uh, shows some disciplines of of some of those horses that actually do the work that don't consider, I mean, we most people consider horse is something that you ride, but um, there were generations that utilized horses as tools to, to accommodate moving heavy equipment, moving yeah. loads, freight, all of those kind of things, and that the draft horses are, are sort of the bygone era of, mm -hmm. of that type of um, equipment. So where will they be? They will be just to the south and west of the main carnival grounds on a, we will have an arena set okay. up for them. Okay. And then uh, the night show on the 10th is Stephen Piercy of RAT mm -hmm. and special guest Quiet Riot, 7 o'clock. So um, it, it, that is, if you're from my generation, that is a, a, a group that was well, or both those groups were very well known. So we're excited to um, we've had Journey this year mm -hmm. uh, in concert, and it sold out, and, and the reception for them was, was huge. So um, I, not to not tell anybody how old I am, but that, <laughs> that's sort of the demographic that, um, that seems to, to really start to come back and, and be a part of that. So um, it was funny. We came upon um, an old news clipping of Quiet Riot had played here exactly 40 years ago in 1984 for wow. for the fair so um, I'm not sure how that that plays out but uh, I, I think it's it's pretty unique that they're coming back and um, yeah. still capable of giving us shows I mean we had REO Speedwagon last year 
Um, so, so those groups are still um, coming still together and, and entertaining folks. Oh, yeah. So, um, for sure. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Um, August 11th is Dallas Smith and Kip Moore, and I don't know about these. So guys. those are country um, oh, music. Okay. So uh, we're, we try to do our best to um, create different genres. Sure. I, I know that uh, one of the things when I first got here and and listening to input was, hey, can you change it up? Can you make sure that that everyone is is uh, accommodated? Mm -hmm. And, and um, again. It's a it's a difficult task to get all of the artists lined up, but we do our very best to make sure that we're not just stuck in one genre. We have opportunities that are that yeah. are as diverse as possible, so that as many people. Um, well, it seems can to me, yeah, down. that the fair has always done a pretty good job of different genres, as you say, different styles of entertainment for different audiences, and uh, that's important. Like we said earlier, you know, who's your target market mar market here? hard to pin down absolutely really so um, I think that the social media gives us a little little bit of help in that and and luckily the team that I have in my in my marketing team and is they're they're a younger group or younger than myself so they have a little little better idea of what the pulse is and and so we utilize that information and and try and accommodate as much as possible okay on August 12th you've got the rock bottom boys is this country? They sound country. Yeah, they're uh, or hillbilly, I, or you know, um, to me, it's 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 a little bit of that uh, bluegrass um, hillbilly sort of. Okay. Uh, every time I hear hear the name, I think of uh, the Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah, movie. me too. And, and the Soggy Bottom Boys, but it, it kind of has that that picking. Oh, good. And, um, but they're super talented, super talented. I've seen a, a number of uh, of their performances and and. I think it's going to be a, a great opportunity, especially outside on one of our um, stages out there for folks to be able to pull up a chair and, and hang out in the good weather. And, so and they're then, just on the grounds. They're going to be on our, our main stage. Okay. Stage, yes. All right. The Big Air Bash is happening on the 13th. What is that? So those are the um, the folks that uh, can flip motorcycles upside and down and backwards. Oh, and, yeah. and that happens within the uh, first interstate arena. They have an inflatable ramp, believe it or not, a, 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 and, and landing pads, so they're able to go in there and do some wow. amazing, amazing tricks. These guys are super talented, um, and, and they've been here for a number of years. I, I got a chance to witness them last year. It was the first time that I'd saw this specific group, mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're super talented. I, I do know that they have, in the spring, they do um, another actual standalone event over at the arena oh, um, good. so it'll be different obviously that they don't try and do the exact same thing each time and and those guys yeah. uh, tend to get a little competitive amongst each other so they're I'm always sure they showing do. off a little bit more so um, fair is one of the opportunities to really get to see them uh, put it all on the line right uh, the Yellowstone River Roundup Rodeo you've got that two nights at seven o'clock yep. is this a traveling Nope. So this is we're a, a standard rodeo through the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Okay. So um, those those guys who are and guys and gals who are traveling around and trying to make enough money to make it to the championships, um, we're just one of their stops. And so um, well, it's it's been a rodeo for a really long time here. Um, it's vacillated a little bit between. Um, some other organizations, but the PRCA is the highest level that it can be. And so um, last year we were at three days, and this year we, we backed it down to two days so that we could uh, accommodate a couple other events on that Thursday night. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's something that, I mean, obviously in my blood, that's that's the world that I come from, um, but we're super excited to have, have them come through here and, and really continue to be a spot on the map for, for those folks to come. and and give their best to, to try and earn a few bucks as they're here. Sure. Well, and fair time is always so big for the 4-H groups. This is the culmination of a year's work. It absolutely for these, is. For these young kids. I should... and, and one of the, uh, when I got here, one of the things that, um, that folks had, had tried to push is knowing that I had an ag background was to make sure that, that we continued that, that we didn't let ag fall to the wayside. Right. Um, Ag feeds our uh, feeds our souls as well as feeds our bellies. So mm -hmm. it's something that um, is a huge, huge index around here in, in Yellowstone County, and mm -hmm. and we're super proud of the kids that come here and they take on those projects, and those will eventually be the the people who are 
creating the commercial cattle and, and the agriculture that's, that's going to be happening around here. Um, they show everything from chickens and goats to beef and horses. Um, this year the horse events will be um, off grounds at a, at a, a secondary location. Mm -hmm. um, one of the nice things is we're, we're closing in on the opportunity to build an outdoor arena for next year to have available for fair 2025. So not only will the 4-H events um, be able to bring their equine stuff back and, and present right there on grounds, um, but our rodeo itself will be able to come out of the yeah, indoor yeah. arena and, and be at the, the outdoor. That gives us an opportunity to facilitate an additional events within the um, first interstate arena at the same time and, and add folks to, to the grounds as often as possible. This, um, the outdoor arena, not only there to facilitate fair, but there's a multitude of equine events that, that would like to be on our grounds. There, we just don't have the ability to accommodate them. The, um, the other facility that is here local, um, I spoke with him at, at length and mm -hmm. he is truly encouraging um, about having us take that on because uh, right now he's not capable of doing all the events that that are asking right and um, he just wants to see us continue to bring more and more equine events to our to our location to I mean because those are folks that come here for multiple days at a time right um, so from an economic uh, impact situation it's really good for the community. They're coming from out of state, out of town. I mean, yeah. they're, they're coming from locations and traveling through. They might be here anywhere from a couple of nights to some of these events go for 10 days. So they, they might actually be on grounds for six, seven, eight nights at a time um, and spending their dollars within our locale. Yeah. And, and those are the type of things that um, they may not be bringing a ton of revenue to Metro Park, but they're putting a ton of revenue into our community. Well, it seems to me that you would have multiple uses for an outdoor arena. And the, when I think about it, I think it's kind of odd that we don't have one. Well, and, and my understanding was that there was one in the past when the track was there. A and it just got uh, so dilapidated that the idea that that grandstands had to come down, it just wasn't safe mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and at the time, trying to figure out what the planning for the next step was going to be. Mm -hmm. I know that there was a, a previous uh, attempt at a master plan um, that, that included potentially having an outdoor arena, but a number of other things on those grounds. And, and um, you know, with COVID and, and all of those things that happen, mm -hmm. some, some stuff tends to sort of get shuffled to the bottom of, sure. the, of the pile. And what we're doing is, is really, as I told you about the ARPA funds, we've We've done a lot of things out there from an infrastructure standpoint, um, but otherwise it's it seemed fairly stagnant. And we're looking, we've had to take down some buildings that are 100 years or more old. Mm. So we're looking to actually start some construction and, and build some things that are gonna help people come to our location and, yeah. and show that we have the ability to accommodate a very, very diverse right. um, set of events. Well, and some of the newer buildings there um, have provided the right size space for that particular event. Maybe the event is too small to be in the main arena, so you've got now accommodations. So in your vision of this outdoor arena, what is the capacity? So it, it'll be right around, I mean, when when we go out with these things the, the part of the municipal process is a request for proposal or an rfp sure. so we have to get some bids we're trying to give them a range of anywhere between 3,000 and 4,500 seats. So okay. um, that's, uh, we, we kind of wanted to hit that middle ground of around 4,000 seats, but we also are really working towards um, this being a, a scaled down proof of concept and that way we have the idea that when we when we can have a handful of events and we've got 4,000 people, we, it's modular enough that we can expand that seating out to oh. um, as the as the years go on and we we know where we stand, we can we can move those numbers up to accommodate whatever it is that we feel like the the demand actually becomes. Wow, so. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. And you hope to have it done by next fair. Um, I I am really uh, pushing pushing hard because that is a it's a tremendous cost savings to the county 
we have uh, internally there's a there's it's very expensive to put the dirt inside of the first interstate arena and really? then take it back out um, it's a little difficult on all of our air handling systems and uh, a lot of the equipment that's in there so mm -hmm. uh, the we have a, a, a handful of events that are going to have to stay inside just because weather weather sure. is relative to, yeah. to those events. Um, but as many of them as we can get moved out of there and keep that dirt out of there, that expense as well as the wear and tear on the building will be reduced tremendously and we'll be able to accommodate in a little more affordable price for smaller horse shows, um, barrel racing, team right. ropings, things that um, groups that that just right now we're beyond their price point to have anything in the indoor arena because we don't have anything um, outside to to yeah. be able to actually utilize in that situation. So this vision of the arena is a completely 100% open air. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yep. Well, I think I we come should from... name it after you. <laughs> That's funny. I would rather uh, somebody in our audience who who feels like that they'd like to have the naming rights would. Would be happy to come down and sponsor sale? it. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure. Um, and Miss Lynn, I, I come from the world where uh, a, a summer fair rodeo should be outside under the stars. So um, that might be a little biased in my opinion, but uh, it seems it's like that there's, it, it truly it's becomes tradition. a tradition. Yeah. So for the fair, you have a value pass available. This is $119. That's admission to all the night shows every gate admission for the entire length of the fair, right? And it, it, I'm actually surprised because that, that's been available for months and, uh, and I, would, I would think that more folks would, would uh, take that on, but I think what happens is we, we tend to lose, lose our focus when, um, oh, fair's a long ways away, so I'll do it later. And right. so, yeah, we wanna make sure that, that people still have that opportunity, but um, yeah, for folks out there, please, Keep an eye on our website at metropark.com because we are always um, uh, have something for our fair and, and there's a lot of times where it's super, super affordable quite a ways out um, and, and you can capitalize on those opportunities even around Christmas time for, for gifts and some things like that. Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, well, that is a good va that's a good value, for $119. Sure. Well, Stoney, good luck with this year's fair. It's going to be a little easier than last year, I'm sure. Well, um... I think that's a relative statement <laughs> okay. because uh, I, I didn't know what was happening when I got here. So, uh, but no, I have. Um, we've we've had some personnel changes, um, had some folks who have moved on to some bigger and better things, but that made room for some tremendous employees. I have I have a team that I am super super proud of. We've got a, a younger generation who has uh, they've their motivation and drive to make us a tremendous facility. I mean, my own internal goals are to, to make it uh, the gem of the region and, and truly a place to bring your events. So okay. I'm super proud of, of my team and um, I'm encouraged every day. Well, good luck with that and thanks for joining us. Thank you, appreciate thanks it. Thanks for watching us on Your County. We'll see you next time.